would help if I unmuted my mic. Hello everyone, Darkside Phil here, and today is Friday, August 14th, 2015, just so you know. Uh, doing this video completely impromptu, was not planning <clears throat> originally to be making this video today, but due to circumstances, due to things that are going on, <clears throat> I kind of wanted to clarify the situation, as well as give you a big kind of, not really a spoiler, but more of a reveal, alright, uh, regarding Project 7, regarding this project, right, that started all the way back in 2010, rebooted in 2012, here we are in 2015, and I'll be honest, I know, listen, I know full well that some of you who are watching this video right now probably have no idea what, uh, Project 7 is, uh, and you probably don't care, alright, and I understand that because this is something that started way back when, uh, before I ever even was partnered with Machinima or anything like that, and it's kind of gone through the ringer, it had an original idea of what it was gonna be, and then it got rebooted in 2012, and it was something that was a limited run series that ended up getting cancelled, and then I had the idea to revive it at one point, um, and what I want to talk about in this video is a few things. I want to, first of all, <clears throat> let everyone know that, uh, I want to kind of talk about Project 7, uh, in regards to what the idea is, what eventually I hopefully it will be, okay, and I am going to reveal right now, I'm going to talk and reveal to you the original idea, the plot line, even some behind the scenes stuff you never knew about uh, in regards to this project from stuff that I filmed back in 2010, yeah, and uh, basically people who have had questions about Project 7 for quite some time who back in 2010, man, I wonder what the game is and I wonder what Phil is going to do with this series, it's all going to be come out right now, I'm going to tell you everything, all right? And I'm going to do that for multiple reasons. And then I'm going to have an update on the project at the end of the video. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about Project 7. This is an idea that I had back in 2010. And at that point, uh, as you know, I wasn't doing this full time on YouTube or anything. It wasn't a job or anything like that. It was just a hobby. And every day when I got home from work, I would spend a couple hours filming whatever the hot new game was. Or if there wasn't a hot new game, I would maybe do a game review or a vlog or something like that. And I remember... In particular, at this time uh, <clears throat> of uh, the year, there was nothing going on. There really wasn't, there weren't many games out that I was interested in playing. There was nothing really to do for a couple days. And because of that, I said, I want to do something completely different. I want to make a suspenseful, like, mystery vlog series that has scripted stuff. And just for the hell of it, I want to see how it would catch on with my viewing audience. Because primarily up to then, everything I had been doing was gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. With a few vlogs and a few... Uh, re reviews mixed in here and there and I did a three mini video the videos are very short they were like one was like six minutes long one was named channel update but ended up having a viral ending that kind of teased this upcoming project okay and uh, it was three very short videos where it was just me and my, my old condo in Connecticut kind of dicking around make uh, I pretended that there was this character named Deathface, this mysterious character who no one knew who he was and he had captured me, and he was going to lock me in my condo, okay? And force me to play a game that I hated. A game from the past that apparently I had hated. And that was the premise of the series. Now, I, I basically extended it, like, really long. I was pretty, like, I was like, couldn't open my door, and, you know, what was the game? And then there was jokes that I wouldn't show what the game was, and there was this suspenseful buildup of what is the game that Phil's gonna play. And I did these three little mini-episodes. And, uh, and then people liked them, by the way. People were like, wow, this is cool. We'd like to see this actually continue. We wish you would do an ongoing series of it. But then more games came out. And back then, as I said, I was doing this as a hobby, not as a job. It was only a couple hours a day that I had a free time to work on it. And at the time, I said I would rather play these games than work on this project. And so I always had that idea in my mind that maybe one day I'll go back to it. Maybe one day I'll actually work on it and do it. But it was always something on the back burner. It wasn't anything that I had planned on spending significant time on or anything. And then... You know, I signed with Machinima. My YouTube presence blew up in the years of 2011, or 2010 and 2011. Come 2012, I take that back, come late 2011, I was actually approached by Howard, my friend, uh, who I knew through Street Fighter primarily, and he had done a few, you know, cooperative gameplays and things uh, with me before, but he had two friends who were heavily into filming and video editing and filmmaking. And they were looking for a project to work on that could pro they could put a lot of time and effort into to get their name out there and show that they had skills to hopefully get their reputation kind of bumped 
and either number one get them recognition with filmmaking and maybe they'll get other jobs or number two to make their youtube channel kind of get a boost and be popular because they already had a youtube channel but that channel was a lot of filmmaking stuff i really i believe really, they had like uh real life pac-man and there was like a real a street fighter video real life third strike video stuff like that where they had all these effects superimposed into fighting games and other video games in real life and it was really cool and the videos actually had several hundreds of thousands of views so they had some notoriety of their own but they figured that pairing with someone like me would give them the boost they need and i'd be able to do a cool and creative series that was very different from anything else that i had done before and so you know i got my friends together and at that time in late 2011 and through the first half of 2012 we did what was called project 7 which was really just taking that original idea from 2010 that i was locked in my condo being forced to play a game that i didn't like and completely blowing it and expanding it you know like blowing it up big time you know exponentially it wasn't anything that i had originally planned the original plan was that i was going to kind of play a game and the game was going to be a game that I hated or a game that I, you know, d disliked for whatever reason. And it was going to be footage of the game, me playing the game, but also there was going to be cuts back and forth between the game and myself and Death Face doing jokes and stuff about the game and comedy skits and maybe even superimposing. Eventually, I was hoping maybe I could get things like a green screen and, and, and put it into this project. This Project 7 from 2012 was completely different. I mean, super visual effects and sound effects and music and all kinds of editing and things that I could never do. I didn't have any of that kind of skill whatsoever. And, you know, Respect the Pact was the name of the two guys uh, who were working on, uh, you know, this project with me. And that was the name of the YouTube channel. Did an outstanding job filming, editing everything. Did a great job with this project, okay? But after four episodes, and it was a lot of work, let me tell you, I mean, we're talking, you know, entire days of filming, plus probably dozens of hours, if not more, of video editing behind a computer for those guys, which I wasn't even involved in. Four episodes, the series had gotten caught on, caught on and got some pretty decent viewership, hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. In fact, I think at one point I could say over a million views the series had gotten on YouTube. Um... Respect the Pack kind of had a change of heart because their YouTube channel was getting a little bit of attention because of Project 7, but not a lot. More people wanted to see Project 7 than anything they were putting on their channel at the time. So really it was kind of, you know, I'll be honest, it was kind of unfair to them. They were putting in a ton of work, but the work that they people wanted to see was what they were doing for me, not necessarily other stuff they were doing for their channel. And also at the time, from what I'm to understand, there were some like life-changing circumstances with those guys where they decided they couldn't put in a lot of time into doing that kind of stuff anymore. And literally, they stopped. If you actually went and looked at their channel afterwards, they stopped doing it for a while. Very scarcely would they even do stuff. They started doing, like, stop-motion animation with Legos and stuff and really stopped doing the high-production value videos because of life circumstances. It happened, you know? They were doing it on a whim. It didn't explode or whatever. And because of that, they had to refocus their efforts. But that left me with a series that was, you know, had steam and unfortunately kind of died out of nowhere. Just die and i always said if i found people who were like aspiring filmmakers or whatever uh who were interested in possibly continuing project seven that i would continue doing it but it never happened i never really found anyone who was interested in doing it obviously if i had tons of money i could have went out and hired a professional crew and had professional video editors and people work on it but i don't make a ton of money so i never had that kind of you know uh funding to produce the rest of Project 7 and have it keep going. I'll be honest with you guys. Even though those videos got hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, I spent way more money on the props and everything else for that, that show than it ever made. I mean, even with the million views that the series made, I was putting in so much money into the props and, you know, having filming locations and all of that. It was very expensive to buy everything and have everything working for it as well. So... In that regard, it really wasn't like a huge money maker. It was just something different. I was hoping I could diversify my content. And you know, I actually remember back that people were, were, Phil, you shouldn't do that. Phil, just stick to games. Phil, you know, don't diversify. You're doing good with your games. Just stick to that. And I was like, but no, I want to kind of diversify my stuff. But it fell through. And that's life. Things happen, right? But I always thought in my head, man, one day I would like to revive Project 7. I really would like to do it now of course time passes and as you know i ad adopted direct capture i started live streaming i moved across the country yada 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 you know here we are in 2015 and earlier this year i was like man you know now i'm settled into my new home 
and I have my own office, and I have more rooms, more filming locations to do this kind of stuff. And what I would like to possibly do this year is, again, try to diversify my content. Try to do series such as a, a series about movies, where I talk about movies and stuff like that. I wanted to do a, a Google or YouTube news series starring Death Face was going to be in it, and he was going to kind of pretend to be like a Google employee, and he was going to joke about stuff at Google. Uh, I was talking about doing gaming news and stuff like that. And, yes, I wanted to reinvigorate Project 7 from what it originally was. So the plan for Project 7 is to actually play the game that originally I was going to do back in 2010, have that footage, and implement that into the series, use my green screen that I have downstairs now to do green screen shots over the footage to pretend like I'm in the game at times, joking with Death Face and stuff like that, okay? And so, originally... <clears throat> I had planned that during the summer, the months of July and August in particular, I was going to be focused on working on Project 7 because traditionally, summer is slow. Traditionally, summer's really freaking slow. But uh, as we're going to talk about in a moment, things didn't work out as planned. But we're going to get to that. What I want to do right now is I want to tell you my original idea for Project 7. I want to tell you what the game is, and I actually want to tell you a little bit about my experience because I actually was filming to do Project 7 in 2010, if you can believe it. I, even though I just said I only made three videos, I actually filmed way more than that. I filmed skits, and I filmed gameplay footage and all kinds of stuff. So here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Big spoiler alert, although people have been asking for this for years, so I'm going to tell you right up front to, to skinny on Project 7. All right. So for years, people have been saying... What is the game? What is the game in Pro just Project 7? You know, that Phil's talking about. What is the game that Phil hates, that Phil wants, that, you know, that Phil doesn't want to play, and Death Face is making him play? What could it be? Well, the truth be told, that the game that I was going to play in Project 7 was not a game that I hated. That's actually the truth, okay? And uh, the truth of the matter is that the game... That Death Face was forcing me to play in Project 7 was a game that I didn't hate, but I disliked because I felt the game, number one, was incredibly overhyped on its release. Number two is to this day still incredibly like held on such high regard and is just its ass gets kissed constantly. And I honestly don't think that this game deserves the recognition that it gets. I think that this game quite honestly, is very much overestimated in how good it actually is because of my unique situation, all right? You have to understand that I grew up in the 1980s and 1990s. Those were like the golden years of gaming for me. And I was a person who played games on the NES, the Super NES, the Genesis, and I was there for some of the core evolution of some of the major franchises of the time. And I had actually played games in this series before this game was released that I felt were much better than this game when this game was released. I think that it was the perfect storm of things going on that allowed this game to get the hype and recognition that it got and that people to this day still in their heads hold it up as the best game of this genre ever when in my opinion I don't think it's anywhere near close. So here we go. After five years of waiting, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to reveal the game that I was going to play in Project 7. Ladies and gentlemen, the game that we are talking about is a game that many of you guessed over the years, some of you did not. The game is, yes, you've probably figured it out by now, Final Fantasy 7. Okay, oh, now, uh, well, it was Project 7, Final Fantasy 7, that was so easy to figure out. But, you know, over the years, I kind of tried to do things to, you know, get people to not think that that's what it was. And quite honestly, over the years, I had ideas that it would be something different. I kind of thought in my head, maybe I'll change it. But Final Fantasy VII, don't take this the wrong way. You know what? I already can tell you, this video is going to have tons of thumbs down. Everyone, oh, Phil's talking bad about Final Fantasy VII and Project Seven and all the Thumbs down. I don't care. You know what? I'll thumbs down the goddamn video. I don't care. All right? Final Fantasy Seven, in my opinion, is one of the most over-regarded, over-praised, kiss-assed games of all time and doesn't deserve it. Here's why. Number one. The game released on PlayStation 1, it was a huge acquisition for PlayStation because up to that point, the Final Fantasy series had only been on Nintendo. So to go from Nintendo and kind of jump ship to Sony was a huge deal. Number two, it was one of the first major RPGs to have 3D graphics. Yes, most RPGs at the time were still 2D animated sprites. This was the first game to jump into full 3D, okay? And so people, oh, it's so hype because it's 3D. Number three... <clears throat> 
because the series already had such a huge installed fan base, regardless of the fact that the game might not have been, in my opinion, as good as previous games in the Final Fantasy series, people felt this was the future. This is the jump from Final Fantasy to the modern era. This is the game. This is what people say. Final Fantasy VII is the game that brought Western JRPGs to America and made them popular. I completely fucking disagree. I think that JRPGs were already popular in America. Here's what I think. Final Fantasy VII was the first game to receive insane media hype because at that point, magazines and everything was becoming huge business. So let's hype the fuck out of Final Fantasy VII. We'll sell a ridiculous amount of magazines. We'll sell, you know, ridiculous. Because it's not like it is today where it's all about the internet and everything was free. Back then you had to go buy the magazine to get the news on the new game. And I remember, 7797. Everything was 77777. Buy Final Fantasy VII. And people who didn't even play video games ran out and bought PlayStations and bought Final Fantasy VII because it got so fucking overhyped. So, that was the game that I was going to play, and I was going to do gameplay of it, like do a playthrough off, well off, I would say off stream, I didn't stream back then, but I was going to do a playthrough on camera with my old camera like I used to, but it wasn't going to upload the footage raw, I was going to use that footage in the series, okay? Final Fantasy VII has a lot that can be made fun of, alright? Just off the top of my head, a few silly things about the game that I know could be hilarious in a series. Number one, why do the characters in the game, in combat, look normal? In combat, in Final Fantasy VII, they walk up, they've got normal proportioned bodies, they look really cool, they kind of look like anime characters. Then they go to anything outside of combat, and they're like little squished chibi characters with really disproportioned heads and limbs. And it makes no fucking sense. Why do they do that? If you could obviously... Make the characters normal size in the combat. Why couldn't you do that in the normal game? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any logical sense. I think it's honestly because it was going to take too much storage space. Because the game itself, I believe, was three or four discs at launch. And at that time, that was one of the, you know, four discs at launch. People, it was high production cost. And so they said, oh, we want to, you know, we, no way we could have another disc or two to have the characters look higher resolution or better uh, outside of combat. But it was so silly. I think the characters look terrible in the game. The music. I hate to say this because I know a lot of people love the soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII. I actually do. I love the overworld theme and I love the uh, boss battles theme of Final Fantasy VII. I also love the, the song at the end, the Sephiroth song, One Winged Angel. I love that song. Oh, and the J J J Nova, Genova theme I like. So there's like four songs in the game I really like. But compared to the soundtracks of Final Fantasy IV and VI, the other two games that had been localized for American audiences as Final Fantasy II and III... I like the soundtracks of those games way better than I like the soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII. In fact, if you listen to the music of Final Fantasy IV or VI, and then you listen to the soundtrack of Final Fantasy VII, you're like, this game was on a CD. Why the hell does the, the audio, the game, the game music sound so terrible? Because it does. It sounds like meaty music. It's like... Bum, 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 Wait a minute. It's on a CD. You couldn't hire a fucking real musician to fucking play the music. And the funny thing is, it was, uh, you know, Nobuo Umetsu who orchestrated all this music, but the music sounds like shit a lot in the game. But then he went and he did symphonies and he has a band who plays it and the music sounds fucking badass. Why couldn't they make it? It's a CD fucking game. Record real quality music and put it on the CD. Don't fucking, and that was the thing, because again, space constraints, right? But for me, it's like, you're bringing this game into the new era, the era of CDs go all out, and it seems like they kind of skimped, the music wasn't as high quality as I would have liked it to be, I didn't like that the graphics were different in combat than outside of combat, it looked like little chibis, and also, <clears throat> the characters, some of the characters in Final Fantasy 7 are the poorest, poorest developed characters I've seen in a, in a role-playing game, coming off of games like Final Fantasy 4 and 6, where every character had this big fleshed out story, with a few exceptions here or there, but when you played a character in those games, you cared about that character, you learned about their backstory, you learned about their personality traits, some of the characters in Final Fantasy 7 is like, Kate Sith, it's a fucking robot that's controlled by someone who works for the Shinra Corporation, and that's it. Like, there's almost no backstory for Kate Sith. You could play as the character for most of the game, but there's never really that much backstory. It's never really, you know, it's not fleshed out. There's entire characters in that game. Cloud. Cloud sucks. Cloud sucks as a protagonist because he's got amnesia. So he's really a non-character. He's a brood, emo, brood. And he was kind of the, the first kind of stereotypical RPG, JRPG character that's the stereotypical male character brooding, uh, you know. And it's stupid. 
in my opinion. I thought that the characters, the protagonists from the previous Final Fantasy games were way better. I could sit here and talk about Final Fantasy VII for about four hours and tell you why I don't think the game is anywhere near as good as Final Fantasy IV or VI, just from my perspective. But I'm sure there's tons of people out there who are going to disagree with me because they've got those rose-colored glasses on, right? This was the first major Final Fantasy game that hit Western shores and was super hyped by American uh, media. And people loved it. It sold like crazy. And some people, this was their first Final Fantasy. So for then, of course, you're going to say, well, this is the best Final Fantasy. And I completely disagree. Now, I will obviously agree that there were other Final Fantasies that were far worse than 7. I thought that 8 was fucking atrociously bad. And uh, I think 10 is actually pretty good. Now that I've played the whole game, I think it's a pretty good game. Uh, I, I actually never played... I had 12, but I never played significantly into it. I got so caught up with the open world combat at 12... That uh, I played it more for the combat than the story. But I digress. Final Fantasy VII was the game I was going to play. And you might not know this, so here's some more reveals, right? In 2010, I actually played it. I played like half of the game. I got all the way... I actually remember, I got to the Shinra Corporation. I fucking hate that stage. That's one of the most poorly designed stages in a JRPG I've ever played because you don't know where you're supposed to be fucking going. You end up walking in circles. You end up getting so many random encounters that the fucking thing takes hours to beat. And unless you know exactly where to go with what key card to open, what fucking door on what elevator, you could be stuck in Shinra Corporation for like hours on end and it's torture. Once you get past Shimmer Corporation, the game actually picks up and there's a couple really good parts of Final Fantasy VII. But I remember I was doing this playthrough and I had already done two to three sessions of gameplay <clears throat> at the time. Uh, we're talking hours, because back then I used to record for a long time. So we're talking, I probably had like 10, 15 hours of gameplay of Final Fantasy VII recorded. And it just never came together. I had the gameplay and it never came together that I made the series back then. And I even had the infamous bathhouse scene, the infamous cross-dressing scene, all the, the infamous, ridiculous, silly, you know, Japanese culture hilarity that really doesn't translate well into American culture. All those jokes, and I'm all filmed and ready to go. I never did anything with it. Uh, and that is disappointing. I know it's disappointing because... Uh, you know, think of the potential back then if I had made a series like that on YouTube when I was blowing up on YouTube. If I had made a series where it was gameplay mixed in with skits and comedy, it might have taken off. But, for whatever reason, I remember there were other releases coming out and I wanted to play those and people were dying to see me play those. And the interest for Project 7 waned and finally died out. And then in 2012, I rebooted it and it was exciting. And then it died out again because the series had to be canceled. And so now fast forward to 2015, and me saying, wow, maybe this, now I do direct capture, right, so I can actually do <clears throat> high quality playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, which I never did before, and I'm thinking, here in the summer, it's going to be pretty dead, so really, here's what I was estimating was going to happen this year, around late June, I was thinking, typically after E3, there's nothing going on in game, so late June, what I will do is I'll have it so my second streams will be me working on Project 7, I'll be filming Final Fantasy VII, you know, sessions, like two-hour sessions of offline gameplay, and hopefully, say, late June into mid-July, late July, maybe I'll have gotten through the game and beaten the game, and then I could take August to sit down and film, write skits, film skits, do these skits, so that uh, I can implement this gameplay footage that I've recorded in June and July and put it into the series, and maybe I can have a couple episodes done for the fall, release it over the fall to get hyped for it, and then maybe next year when things die down again in gaming, which undoubtedly they do early in the year, then I could work on it again. As you guys know, that didn't work out at all. What ended up happening this year was this ended up being not only an incredibly busy summer for me because of new releases and other stuff going on, but what it seems to be is that there really won't be downtime anymore. There's now so much going on with gaming between re-releases and episodic releases and DLC releases and indie games and the fact that now I have really widened my reach with the content that I make for you. It's not just I play the new overhyped games and if there's new new overhyped games I don't do anything. No. Now I've really reached out especially with the Patreon stuff. I do montages and I do uh, marathons and stuff like that. My content's different. It's very different than how things used to be in 2010 and even in 2012. I'm a very different person and a different content creator now than I used to be. And even compared to last summer. Last summer, I remember, I moved and there was downtime during the move time because there was nothing really coming out. 
this year didn't happen. We had Batman Arkham Knight that came out in late June because it was delayed. That carried into the whole first half of July, right? Then we had a DLC for it. Then we had little mini releases like Godzilla. And even through this month of August, which so far for the first half of August, there's been no major releases. There's still things that people want me to check out, like the Rare Replay Collection, like Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. And uh, even though... I intended on having time to work on Project 7. It just haven't worked out. So now let's get to this, the skinny of things. And again, people get thumbs down the video. Thumbs it. Go ahead. Thumbs it down. I hope this video has 4,000 thumbs down at this point. I really don't care anymore because the bottom line is I'm an honest person. And I am stressed out right now to my wit's end. I'll be honest. Last night I couldn't even sleep because I'm thinking I got to work on Project 7. I promised the viewers I'd work on Project 7. And we even had Patreon goals based off of Project 7. And I still don't have anything to fucking show for it yet. Yet, there's still a large group of people who are saying, Phil, you should be playing this DLC, and why didn't you go back to Splatoon, and why didn't you do this? You should, you know, I wish I could clone myself. I wish I could clone myself, and I could have one person who does creative things with video, and another person who does gameplay footage, but it doesn't, it, that's not the case right now, all right? And quite honestly, two days now in a row, I wanted to work on Project 7, and I intended on working on Project 7, and it hasn't worked out. And the reason it hasn't worked out is because of various reasons. Last week, Patreon stuff happened. I had to do stuff for patrons. And I had to do the best and worst of June and July montage, which people were asking me for for two months. Where is it? You didn't do one for June. And it ended up taking up most of the day <clears throat> for me to work on this project. Today, right, I had every attention. I'm going to work on patron stuff and then Project 7. What happens? The Street Fighter V beta, which f completely failed back in July, launches out of nowhere. They turn it on today for two hours. So I was like, well, it's now or never because coming up soon, it's the hardcore gaming season. I'll have no chance to play this, right? There's no chance for me to go back. I have to play the beta now if I'm going to play it. So I jump in and I played it for two hours. And I did. I got good footage of it and people on the stream enjoyed it. So that was great. But you see what's happening. It's like everything's kind of conspiring and sh saying, Phil, just... There's no time for Project 7. Don't do Project 7. And right now, I've got no footage recorded whatsoever of Final Fantasy 7 that I can use in the series. And I really, realistically, <clears throat> with, with the timing right now, everything going on and the things I'm trying to finish and the things that people want me to do, I'm like, I don't think I could put anything together. <clears throat> I don't. And here's the thing. When I do, if I do relaunch Project 7, I want it to be good. And what I mean by that is, do I want it to be amazing, high-quality level stuff like the reboot of Project 7 was with respect to pack? No. But I want it to be a quality product. If I'm going to be taking time out from doing my normal work and away from gameplay that you want to see, that you want to see me do, right? I want it to be worth everyone's while. I don't want to whip something together for the sake of, oh, I... You know, I have an, I promised this and I, I'm obligated to do this or, you know, people, you know, I, I said I would do it, so I'm just going to do it. I'm going to whip it together and do it quick and then it sucks. The thing that really sucks in life is when you have responsibilities like that. Like, I know, for example, they're writers, right? And they end up having these contracts <clears throat> with a publishing house. And because they're a popular writer, oh, we've got a five book deal with the publishing house. But the writer really only has two books that he wants to write. And he tells the publishing house that, and they're like, well, too bad. We'll publish the two books you want, but we also need three more from you. So then that writer ends up writing two great books and three shit books because he doesn't have the time to write the other three books. He wants to focus only on the two, and, he, you know, he's contractually obligated was the only reason that he did it. I don't want to become that person, that person who becomes obligated to do something and therefore puts out shit work. I, I, when I'm going to put out something creative or I'm going to do a project where it's going to take a lot of extra work and editing and things, I want it to be good. I don't want to just go through the motions for the sake of doing it. And don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't want to do Project 7. I just don't think that I could do Project 7 right now with the time frame that I have to work on it and put out anything quality for you for numerous reasons. Number one, I don't have a camera. Right now, the camera I'm using is my webcam, and it's great. That web, This webcam is great for in here, but I can't move this webcam around my house to film things, and this webcam has no zoom whatsoever. My old camera over here, my Sony camera, I'll bring it over. <clears throat> this is my Sony camera. This is the camera that I used for the old Project 7. This is the camera that I used for the longest time to film all of my vlogs and stuff. This camera's on its last legs. This camera won't even film anything longer than around 10 minutes. At 10 minutes, the camera just decides, oh well, and it stops recording. 
It's not a battery issue. It's just the camera's old as fuck. Do you know how many years I used this camera? How many hours a day I was using it? This camera was not built for that much use. And it's dying. So I don't have a camera. I have this camera. This is a Panasonic camcorder. It's a Handycam camcorder. It's really not very good. It's blurry. The focus is terrible. The uh, color adjustment is terrible. It says it does 1080p, but every video I've ever filmed on it in 1080p looks blurry as hell. So it's not a good camera. This is a good camera for me to very quickly do a vlog moving around the house or on a vacation. This is not a camera that I would want to use for an edited series. The videos will look like shit. And I have been trying to raise money this year to buy a better camera. Uh, and it just hasn't turned out. In fact, a couple of months, I, I went under the goals that I had tried to put up on uh, <clears throat> on Patreon. And as you know, I've got a lot of debt for moving across the country. I don't have money to throw. I don't have $1,000 I could take to go buy a camera and batteries and everything. I don't. I don't have the money. If you know, if this were two, three years ago, when I was living in Connecticut before I moved and I had all this debt, sure, then I had all this disposable income. It's, it's a different situation now. And I just can't. I don't have the resources, and the money to get equipment to make a good series That's that would be Project 7, okay? Number two, time-wise, right now, <clears throat> right now, if I were to work on Project 7, with even the days I said that I would take maybe three to four days in the month of August to work on Project 7. We all know it didn't work out last week because I was working on that montage, which I had promised first. I had to go first because I had been waiting for two months to make the July and June montage, and I had patron responsibilities today. Today, again, Street Fighter V out of nowhere. It was Maybe this might be the only opportunity for me to ever play it. Of course I'm going to do that today, out of nowhere. And I have more patron responsibilities. Tonight, I'm instead of doing any kind of a gameplay stream, tonight I'm going to be doing patron perks, mailing out t-shirts. I got one or two private Q&A videos to do. I've got responsibilities to patrons. So... It's not working out. If I were to do Project 7, I would, in two more days, so I would have a week from today, which would be the 21st of August, and maybe like the last day of August, the 31st, which is a Monday, maybe I could cram in sometime then, but do you really think realistically in two days, I can write, film, edit, and get something together for you, you know what I mean? With all the stress around me of people saying, Phil, play this game, Phil, you should be playing this, and it seems to me, and I'll be honest with everyone, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, this is me, and I'm the only real person that can give you this information because I'm the only person who is the focal point of all the feedback that I get. It seems to me that right now, the consensus is, even though people would like to see Project 7 come back, they'd want to see it as a quality product. They don't want to see a rushed piece of crap. And it also seems to me that right now in particular, that we're at the end of the summer, with the limited time I have left before the new releases start coming out, people would much see, rather see me focus on Fallout New Vegas, finishing Metroid Prime, doing an episodic release like Tales from the Borderlands, playing maybe a little bit more of Just Cause 2, but in addition to that, doing what I promised you I was going to do back in May and returning to Splatoon at least for one major stream so I could play the new game modes and the weapons and I could give you a kind of follow-up review of what I think about the game three months later now that all that free content that they promised had been released. The DLC releases that are coming out, like there is a Batman DLC release, and a lot of people would like to see, is this DLC release even worth playing this month, or is it a piece of crap, right? There's stuff, there's stuff that people want to see me do that I'm not doing, and people are disappointed. Man, I can't believe Phil didn't do that because, you know, he's busy with other stuff, and I'm disappointed that people want to see me do all this stuff now. It seems to flip. Earlier this year, I swear, this is what it seemed to me, earlier this year in January, it seemed like there was a movement, and people were like, Phil... We like the gameplay you're doing, but we want to see you do other stuff. We want to see you branch out and do better quality reviews with gameplay footage. We want to see you do more edited series, and we want to see you do more montages. And now we're in August, and if you actually look, whenever I do a montage, the views are kind of like falling off. When I started much earlier this year, the montages I was doing were getting 30,000 views, and everyone was hyped to see them. Now it's kind of like, I do one, and it's like, eh, well, Phil did the, the montage, but when's that playthrough coming out? And that's what it seems to me like now the focus has shifted that people prefer to see me play the games and review the games. And right now that's what people are into. So I kind of got to go with what people want to see me do, right? I'm not going to rush and try to put out a piece of crap Project 7 for you that I don't think would be up to the quality standards that I want to set. Just because I said that I would do it when all these circumstances have kind of happened. And almost, like I said, it's almost like the planets aligned. And are telling me, don't do Project 7 now. 
And so what I want to tell you in this video, now that I'm sure everyone has thumbed it down, right? It's like 4 million thumbs down, 4 million thumbs down. A few things. Number one, this does not mean that I am never doing Project 7. It just means that as of right now, I'm officially announcing I'm not doing it right now. It doesn't make sense, all right? I will possibly, in the future, if I do have a turnaround and I'm not in this much debt and I can get a better camera and I can work on these things a lot better, I'll work on Project 7. But I would rather put out something that's nicely produced and is a good quality thing rather than a turd, okay? And a rushed turd at that. That's number one. So Project 7 is not going to happen now, but it doesn't mean it's never going to happen. It just means not right now. Number two, what that means is that the days in August that I said I was taking away from streaming are now rescinded as of today. As you saw, I streamed today, so that was rescinded. Next Friday, the 21st, I'm going to be working. I'm going to be doing one to two gameplay streams, and it's going to probably be the continuation of what I'm doing, or maybe it might be a good opportunity to say that'll be the day that I return to Splatoon. And I do a big stream of Splatoon, and I do my follow-up on Splatoon, okay? So there will be no more days of, of August where I'm not streaming. I'm going to be streaming every day daily, whether it's continuing playthroughs or new things that I wasn't going to do. I can now do them, stuff like that. I'm doing that, okay? So I am going to rejuggle the schedule around, and I'll have more information about that for you shortly. Number three, Patreon. Because it was kind of tied to Project 7, obviously now is going to change. And I want you to understand that I am very deeply sorry that I was not able to put together a Project 7 product for you. I know that it was a goal for the month of August for me to take all this time off uh, to work on Project 7. And I also know that for patrons who pledged a certain amount of money, it was one of your perk levels that you possibly could be a part of Project 7 or another project. Right now, I'm going to be honest with everyone. At this point, I'm taking the Project 7 thing off the table. So if you did pledge to those perk levels on Patreon, you still can be a part of a project. I've already announced this. I'm doing both a Thanksgiving and a Christmas special this year. And they're going to be different. I think Thanksgiving is going to be more gameplay oriented. Christmas is going to be more of like a holiday special like I used to do where there may be a skit or something involved in it. And I'm going to try to get people involved in helping me with that. So you have opportunity to be a part of either of those if you did pledge to that highest perk level on, on a Patreon. So don't think that I'm going to renege on my commitment or anything. No, I said from the get-go, it would either be Project 7 or something else. Right now, I'm just telling you officially, it's not going to be Project 7 because it's not happening now. <clears throat> the earliest I would even consider working on Project 7 at this point would possibly be next year, okay? Now, I'm going to go one step further. I could easily say that's it and end the video. But no, I feel bad. I genuinely feel bad that Project 7 isn't happening. And so, because... I had a goal on my July Patreon that was $1,250, right? That I was going to take time off this month to work on Project 7, which never happened. I never took the time off, right? But there was $250, so the goal below that was $1,000. So there was $250 there that was supposed to be to make up for the days that I wasn't going to work. Well, now I'm working on those days. So I'm not just going to pocket that money like these other people who use Patreon or Kickstarter or whatever, and then they never actually come through with their promises. No, that money is going to now be reduced from my future Patreon. So this month, the month of August, right, I have goals right now on Patreon. And right now, as of the moment you're watching this video, I want to let you know I've reduced those goal levels by $250. So you already gave me the money last month. I didn't come through with Project 7 as promised. So that goal level, that money, is being applied to August now. So the top goal level now for August is not $1,250, it's 1000 If I can raise 1000 on Patreon, I'm going to be doing an indie marathon, okay? So that's the way for me to come through and not... I could easily just say I'm a dick and pocket the money like some of these people fucking do, but I can't, I couldn't live with myself. I'm not, I understand that I want this to be a working relationship where you guys watch my content for free and enjoy it. I get to have a living doing this. You pledge to my Patreon, you get cool perks. I have goal levels and cool events and things that I give back to you, but I also get that money for funding and constant improvement and things, right? So I am not going to just pocket that money. It goes towards now August. So all the August goals have been reduced. That money went from July and got taken away from July and placed towards the, the August levels, okay? So understand, I apologize. If you are very disappointed, you are dying to see Project 7 right away. I'm disappointed too. You know what? I'm going to thumbs down this video on YouTube. I'm going to personally thumbs down my own fucking video because I'm disappointed that shit didn't turn out the way that I'd hoped. But that's life. And, you know, we move forward positively. So 
I want to say thank you to those of you who were interested. If you weren't interested in Project 7, this is certainly good news for you because it means there's going to be at least two full more days of content in the month of August, including Splatoon coverage and other stuff, and that I'm going to not be so stressed out and pulled apart and focused on other stuff. I'm going to be focused on the gameplay content that people have been asking for, okay? So, in summary... Project 7 is something that I think could potentially still be a successful project in the future when I have the means to do it, meaning the right equipment, the right funding, and the time. Now, unfortunately, even though I wanted it to be, is not that time, and I'm making the executive decision to not make Project 7 and produce it now because I don't want to rush out something that I don't feel would be up to the quality standards that you deserve and that I want to put out. I don't want to rush and put out a turd. I want to work on it and put out something good, but I can't do that right now, especially with the very limited amount of time that I have between now and being incredibly busy with new releases coming out in the future months. So I apologize I couldn't come through, but there will be more gameplay footage. I'm listening directly to your feedback, which is why I'm doing this. And like I said, I'm not just taking patron funds and pocketing them. Those who did have the high patron goal level hit, you can be a part of the Thanksgiving or Christmas specials, which I'll be talking about soon. And I'll be giving you information about what those specials will entail so that you can decide which one you want to be a part of. If you did pledge to my Patreon in the month of July and, you know, that goal level was $250, that money's being applied to August. So I'm reducing those goals. So again, I'm not pocketing anything. It's all... You know, trying to be kosher and transparent here. I'm very saddened that I couldn't come through for you. But now that I've explained what the project is, you understand the work that it would entail to do what this is going to be. I hope you understand. And I hope that hopefully in the future it works out and eventually I can do Project 7. So, I actually feel better. I feel better now that I've made this video and I got it off my chest and I was able to publicly reveal to you. This is stressful. These past two and a half months, I've been stressed the fuck out, man. Because I'm like, man, people want Project 7, or I keep saying I'm going to do Project 7, and it never works out. It never works out. And I really hope, I do, I hope that it will work out in the future, but I want to put out something quality, okay? Sorry it didn't work out. I hope you appreciate the honesty, and now that I kind of came clean about everything that's going on, and uh, that's that. Now we can focus daily on gameplay content again, and the stuff that you've been asking me to do, we can get to, rather than worrying about me taking time out to work on this Project 7. I know people will be upset. Thumbs down the video. Let's get the world record for thumbs down on YouTube, okay? And, uh, and that's it. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you for an awesome, hopefully, hardcore gaming season that now will be a lot less stressful because I don't have this kind of weight on my back. Thanks, everyone. Peace out. See you later.